Thank you, Minister Goodyear and Minister Duguid for your outstanding remarks and your support of this key initiative. Uh, I and my colleagues from IBM are really thrilled to be part of this announcement today with our federal and provincial governments and with our university partners. This is but the latest step in a tradition on IBM's part of investing in innovation here in Canada. We've been building technology in Canada and exporting it to the world for over 100 years. If you were to go back a few decades ago, you would find IBM colleagues down on King Street here in Toronto working on the latest advancements in punch clocks and cheese slicers. Now, innovation means something very different today, and today it's about things like our software business. IBM is the largest software developer in Canada with thousands of our IBM colleagues working right here in Ontario. In fact, we consider Canada to be the home of IBM Analytics. Analytics is technology, much of it software technology, that allows us to analyze massive amounts of data to understand what is happening, why it is happening, and what might happen next. The range of practical applications for analytics is burgeoning because the volume, variety, and velocity of data that we can collect and organize is itself burgeoning. Analytics can be used for many practical purposes. For instance, it can be used to improve the life chances for premature babies based on analysis of real-time vital statistics. It can be used to manage traffic congestion. This helps us identify faster routes for commuters and better paths to less polluted cities. It can be used to help governments fight crime by identifying patterns of criminal activity and potential future trouble spots. This is Canadian innovation being shared across the world. So today's announcement is a continuation of a long-standing commitment to Canada. IBM has led this $210 million public-private sector research consortium, which we expect will help us solve many of these pressing issues facing the world today. Now, to be successful, we will need smart people. And so a total of 145 new jobs will be created, and not just any jobs. These are highly skilled positions. We're talking about PhDs operating at the top of their fields. Many of these new researchers will be working in our IBM labs in Ontario and with our university partners. At the core of this research is what we call agile computing, which provides the technology platform required to undergird data-intensive tasks as those I've been describing. And the IBM Canada Research and Development Center will use this agile computing to solve issues crucial to society. Researchers will explore the effects of rapid urbanization and aging infrastructure in our cities. They will investigate issues related to health care and its rising costs. They will examine water conservation in both rural and urban contexts. And they will exploit advanced weather modeling and smart grid technologies to help us better manage our energy consumption. These are real issues that have a direct impact on our lives in Canada and well beyond. Our new research center will create global mandates around these challenges and, as Minister Goodyear described, help us build new global industries. Now, to support this research, IBM is providing high-performance and cloud computing environments needed. We will be building a multi-million dollar data center in Barrie that will be linked to the virtual research platform. And this state-of-the-art facility will use the most advanced environmentally friendly technologies for heating and cooling. It will be LEED Gold certified for its exceptional use of these green technologies. The University Consortium will have access to this data center in Barrie as soon as it is completed in the fall. The IBM Canada Research and Development Center will be the first formal R&D lab in Canada affiliated with IBM Research. But IBM Research has a rich history of inventions that have changed our world. I began my own IBM career as a student in IBM Research, and so I have some awareness of the brilliance of some of these innovations. And in case you're thinking that it all relates to white coats and microcircuits and similar technologies, let me give you a few other examples that have real-world impact. IBM researchers invented the laser that underpins LASIK surgery, which has helped countless people improve their vision. They created the UPC barcode, a technology now so ubiquitous that each of us has probably encountered it several times already today. And they built Watson, a computer technology that a year ago defeated the most talented human competitors at the game show Jeopardy, 
and which is today working on faster and more accurate healthcare diagnoses through an ability to process natural language. You'll be able to take a peek at this, uh, this Watson technology outside as you leave today. IBM is very serious about R&D. Last year, our firm invested over $6 billion in R&D globally, and it is most gratifying to see a bigger share of this happening in Canada. This is a win for all Canadians because it will help us build Canadian software and engineering skills, promote Canada's competitiveness and productivity on the world stage, and accelerate the commercialization of Canadian-led research and development to help us further excel in global markets. So this is a unique collaboration between government, academia, and industry that will advance our competitiveness in the digital economy, and we are very proud to be a part of it. Thank you for sharing your time with us today.